So Notre Soir is a CI, and for the record, I am a student of French. I am not a French teacher. <laughs> so I apologize in advance for any mispronounce, like not pronouncing things correctly. Um, Justin, you know, does speak French and was going to give a very authentic element to this presentation. So yeah, I apologize in advance, but um, but I do know these books inside and out. And so I'm excited to tell you about them. So this series um, includes levels one through four plus AP. Um, I will say that level one can be used in middle school. It would just be used more slowly than you might do it in like a level one for uh, freshmen. Um, there are so many resources in every unit, as I'll be discussing soon. Um, you really, it's like you want to pick and choose what you use. Um, you don't necessarily have to cover everything. Um, so yeah, so let's begin, but let's um, mute. And I don't, only because. Oh. Oh. Hannah, can you mute people if they, just to help? But it looks like everyone's- um, I, I think I've lost my co-host privileges. Oh yeah, you did, and I can't give it to you. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so um, highlights of the French CI titles. There's very exciting materials that pique students' interests. Um, there are inclusive materials to meet all students' needs. And the content focuses on different Francophone communities worldwide, which I get into in a moment more in depth. There's vertical alignment between the levels. So um, they like each level is organized very similarly and continues with the AP themes and every unit, et cetera. And then there's horizontal alignment with other Vosace language titles. So if your colleague, if your colleague who's a Spanish teacher is using Nuestra Historia 1 and you're teaching with Notre Stra 1, then you two will have very similar materials and similar topics that were themes for every unit. Um, not precisely the same, but very similar. Um, and then it's completely aligned to national and state standards. Um, and then of course, if you need support, we support you with real humans <laughs> like me and Hannah. Um, so the best thing, I mean, the real central thing, the core of Notre Dame is are the stories. And there are stories of all kinds. So there are like sad and funny stories and inspiring stories. There's cultural stories. Um, there's stories that students read, of course, but there's also stories that they watch. And I'll be showing you some of those in a moment. And there's like all the stories have native speaker audio with them. So students can listen to the stories. And then there are many stories that we ask students to create themselves. And then of course, there are like the class stories that you co-create with them. So stories are really the backbone of the curriculum. So soon, if you you know haven't yet used Notre Dame or haven't explored it on your own, you and your students will have your favorite stories. And like, that's such a cool, you know, like there's stories that um, like students can relate to and that you might find more meaning in because maybe you traveled to that place, et cetera. So there's just so many stories and w some will come out and like emerge to be your favorites. One of my favorites that I just want to point out is actually the very first story in Notre Dame 1. Um, and it's Bonjour and then that, you know, other version of um, Hello. So what is wonderful about the story is that it takes place in Senegal. And actually, let me just log in and show you. Oh, that's funny. Those words are staying right there. <laughs> Hold on. We found a bug. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, I can talk to a real human. Um, okay. So this story is in... Notre Dame 1, and it's the very first story. And what I love about the story is, first of all, it takes place in Senegal. So, I mean, it's just right away, students who might not realize that French is spoken outside of France learn that it is, in fact, spoken outside of France. <laughs> um, it also incorporates other cultures, you know, within Senegal, because it references the Wolf language. And, um, and it's showing, you know, students in a classroom, so like students can identify with it. Um, and it's just, you know, like there's a nugget of culture here. There's kind of like a, aha, like, oh, they speak two languages there. Um, and, and that's just an identifiable story. So this is one of my favorites. Um, are there anyone here that have their own favorites that have used Notre Dame before? And you can unmute 
or maybe you have favorites, like your students have favorites. Um, one of my favorites was from the third um, Notre Histoire à Toi, and it was about the Spider-Man de Paris. Yes. And kids just love the story. It's a real true event that happened. Um, and it was about an immigrant who ended up saving a, a, a young child's life. And he ended up getting recognized by the, the president of France. He came to the United States and he met a lot of famous people here. And it, I don't know, I just, it was very kind of exciting. Um, and plus it was a real story. So you could, you could even expand on it. Um, I was going and, to say, yeah, like you yeah, can, it, like we use this, but you could also find additional things. Yeah. I found a ton of stuff. And so did my students, because some of them looked it up after class. They're like, Madame, did you know this? I said, yeah, I saw that too. So I love really that. Got them, you know, interested. Yeah, um, the the author of the stories in Notre Dame, her name is uh, Nina yeah. Holes Find. And she just did an amazing job of researching and finding like these like real things from the Francophone world. And you know, turning them into comprehensible, comprehensible, uh, engaging stories. And yeah, me and um, the curriculum manager on, that worked on this, like learned so much about the Francophone world. And like, this is an example. I love it. And I do remember when this happened. Like, I remember seeing it in the news, like in real time. Anyone else have a favorite? There's another one I really liked in the, in the second series. Um, and it was in the first unit. It's the second story called An Expatrié Francais à Chicago. And it, when I was reading it, it reminded me of when I went to live in France and kind of how I felt, you know, after, you know, I was excited. But then I was like, oh, everything is really kind of different. It just really brought up the differences. Yes. Um, and I, 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 I personally enjoyed that story a lot. Good. Yeah. And I remember this too. Like um, it's, it's about, you know, someone kind of having culture shock mm -hmm. in the United States being in Chicago from France, I believe. Right. And, um, and so like, and they, I love how like that, of course, brings up cultural comparisons and, you know, like what we consider culture outside of the United States and sometimes it's hard for us to see our own culture, right? So this story kind of helps us see that or identify it. So it could like, um, you know, you could use this story to have that kind of discussion with your students. Um, another little trick that I'm just like, kind of random, but we forget sometimes that it's not obvious is that with any of these illustrations, like if you wanted to read this story with your students and then talk about, you know, the scene and the illustration, if you double click it, it gets huge which my screen is huge so it gets kind of funny but um but yeah so it like just goes really large and you could project that on your board and like talk about you know the pizza he's wanting or can you know how he remembers eating different food back in France yeah those are two really good stories does anyone else have any favorite stories well I encourage everyone yeah the the furious professor that one is in level one. I just want to find it really quick. I think it's in level one and it's in unit one, I think. Why do you like that, Joan or Joanne? Not to put you on the spot, but. <laughs> um, so I teach middle school and my students really love just acting things out. Um, they really like acting out the the boy who runs to his house and runs back to the school and runs to his house and runs back to the school and gets out of breath. And they love acting out the the teacher who says, oh, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a fun one. I love that. Yeah. And it's like so simple. But I mean, well, as a student, um, I will say, and I was just telling someone this last night, like when you're a student and just learning a language, it is so amazing when you can understand a simple story you you feel like you like unlocked something you know and these stories like you know they're simple but there's still culture in them and there's still fun in them and you can act them out so i love that and i forgot about these illustrations i really like these illustrations they're newer 
Um, awesome. Okay, so let me go back here. But if you guys have any other like things that you want to share along the way, please feel free because some of you have used no trace rot and some of you haven't. So I'd love to like get a little bit of that back and forth. Um, and it's cool when our students have their favorites, of course, because that like just means that they're engaged and caring about class. So all of these stories um, also have interactive resources that you can use to facilitate language acquisition and teach culture. So things like panoramas, authentic materials, IPAs, which are which stands for integrated performance assessment, maps, interview videos, and scripts and, and additional stories. Um, so I will go over that in a moment when we like kind of dig in. And as I mentioned, there's lots of culture. Um, students learn about different cultures, people, places, historical events, like we were just saying with the Spider-Man event. Um, they're asked to imagine themselves in these places and navigate the world using the language. So a lot of that is in the um, like in the integrated performance assessments, or we also also have like more authentic tasks woven into every unit. So they might you like look at a uh, weather forecast and have to interpret it, or they might be asked to write an email to like, like imagine a scenario in which they might have to write an email to a friend in French. So um, they're asked to like kind of put themselves in these situations and navigate them using the language. So it really, you know, starts to get them thinking, oh, maybe one day I will be in France and like taking the bus, how do I get a ticket and things like that. It's pretty inspiring. Um, and they're supported by all these resources and you um, so that they can build proficiency and confidence. So everything from like the recording tools to the audio, to the writing and reading tasks. I mean, that's all, all that exposure is going to give them more confidence when using the language um, and make it so that they just have that, you know, great journey um, toward proficiency. So now let's look more closely at the different resources included and how they're organized, because understanding how these are organized is really key to understanding how to use the material. Um, I'm going to stick with Notre Dame 1, but how this, how all of these are, like, or how level one is organized is very similar in all the levels. Um, and I will say for anyone who's teaching AP, uh, Hannah and I are going to do a session tomorrow that focuses on the Spanish and French AP titles. And so we'll dig into those and like talk about the differences there tomorrow. So as I said earlier, you shouldn't um, use everything in a title. <laughs> um, I always say Voces is not prescriptive. It's really like up to you how you want to find a path um, through the curriculum. However, there are some elements that you should definitely do because it is well, it's not prescriptive, it does build on itself. Um, so every unit focuses on a short list of high frequency structures or vocabulary. And each of these short stories of which there are four in the lower levels and three in the higher levels, um, but each short story section introduces a like a one short list of those vocabulary words. And it basically gives you, like we offer resources and tools for introducing these words to your students. And then, of course, these words are incorporated into the stories themselves. And it's through this like very gradual exposure and repeated exposure to these words that um, the students acquire them. And I say words, but really a better word is structure, because structure means that it's not just a single word, but a lot of times there will be like grammar sort of embedded in the structure, um, whether it's a tense or, um, you know, any element of grammar. So um, something to keep in mind. So when I just, just to show you where I am again, I'm in the short story one and unit one. And the first page um, is this important vocabulary section. We have the essential question, we have the vocabulary, and then anything with a yellow border is a teacher note. Um, one of the tools that you can use to introduce students to the structure, the, to the structures is TPR or total physical response. Uh, we give you ideas for these gestures that you do with your students, um, and it's a way of establishing that meaning in, in their minds. Um, so for every set of structures, we give you some ideas. You can always make up your own. Sometimes you, wanna, you might want to have your students make up their own. Then we have the vocabulary and context section. These um, are like kind of like more traditional, more independent, like students could do this more independently, or you could do it as a class. Um, this is a presentation that kind of, you know, gives the 
French and then translates it. Um, and then we have this fill in the blank vocabulary activity. And again, it's just like getting them familiar with these words, giving them that exposure. Some students might love the TPR, other students might love this more. So it's kind of nice to give them that variety. The next page are the, it's like the PQA or personalized question and answer scripts um, or personal questions. Um, and similarly, we have the slideshow. This could be projected on the, on the big screen behind you. The students wouldn't necessarily be following along on their devices. So much of what happens with our story series is done in class between the teachers and students and isn't you know, necessarily the students logged in doing it independently. There are times for that, but um, I do wanna just make clear that you know, Bose's classroom is usually one in which this teacher is leading the discussion um, using this material as like a jumping off point. So there are questions, um, these questions target the um, structures for that short story section. So it's another way for students to hear those words and phrases and to be using them in a way in this case that's meaningful to them because it's talking about their teacher or their classes. Um, and themselves. And so it's just like becomes a little bit more personal. And of course, all students, well, not all students, but most students love talking about themselves and their lives. Um, and we, of course, have like all throughout the curriculum, a lot of support for you. So like we are explaining like what PQAs are and how to do it. We're actually working currently on more, on giving you even more support through a new um, resource center. So stay tuned for that. But, um, and if you ever want to, you know, get more information about doing PQAs or doing TPR, you can always contact us and set up a training. So again, we're, we just went through like three ways that we can introduce the structures. And then we have the story script. This is a way for you to co-create a story with your students. Um, we give you the scripts, which is, um, these are almost always really silly, <laughs> but they're targeting again, the same structures. The parts that are underlined are the elements that can be personalized. So you could either come up with your own um, like specific, um, like in this case, you know, like singer or something <laughs> for this, or you could ask your students to. Um, and we give you like some examples of story asking and some activities that you can do with the story. But these stories can become very unique to each class and, and are really interactive and fun and all focusing on those same structures. So whether you do all four of those things or, or two of those things, or sometimes the PQA and the other times TPR or something like that, it's up to you. But these are all ways to get students familiar with those words and hearing them repeatedly. And then we have the story. Um, the story focuses on those same structures. It's you know a story that they could read independently that you could read to them. If they've done some of those pre-reading activities that I just went over, um, then they're going to be pretty familiar with those words and feel very capable at this point of reading the story. Uh, we also have native speaker audio with it. So you could play this for the class or they could listen to it on their own. And we often have illustrations, which I mentioned can be like clicked on twice and take up the whole screen. And you can kind of use these illustrations to retell the story as well. Um, so there's so much you can do with a story. You could spend days with it. You could do it in like 20 minutes or less. It's really up to you, but it's a kind of reading your students and seeing how much they're engaged and also, you know, how well they're doing with it. Um, and then after the story, there are always activities and they're comprehension activities. They often um, start to, with like the activities one and two are often very input driven, meaning it's mostly like true, false or uh, fill in the blank. And then the activities, as you get to the higher numbers, in a sense, um, become more output driven. So like tell the, like retell the story or tell the story in your own words. Um, so that's something to just kind of keep in mind when you're assigning the activities. I was just telling someone the other day that if, you know, if they don't feel like they're, some of their students might not like do well at producing the language at this point, then just stick with those you know, activities one and two, and that's going to just give them more exposure to the language. Most of the short stories also have an alternative version, and these are often kind of capturing a grammatical element, um, like verb forms in this case. And so we put this attention 
there for the students to see and you can dive into and you can discuss the grammar concept in depth with them or you can just kind of keep it brief and um you know to the point but these are it's a wonderful way to introduce different grammatical concepts because they have already read the story they're getting really comfortable with those structures and you know the slight difference here is just enough for them to handle in most cases so um, again you could read the story you could play the audio um, you could just have them read it individually and then there's always one or two activities to reinforce their understanding of that story so that is a typical short story section those are core to the unit so i mean if you feel the need like those kind of those introduce the, each chunk of language or short list of structures and um the long story sections actually revisit the previously taught structures so they're in addition to like they're not a requirement um to get through a unit but they are more exposure to those same structures and a new and interesting story um, and these could be used as quizzes. Um, they could be used as more independent work that students like do over the weekend. You could assign the story and have them, you know, read it on their own and, and complete some of the activities. And the later long stories, which incorporate almost all of or most of the structures in a unit, um, as you can see, the list is getting longer. Um, these could be used as final exams for the units if you want. You know, there's some other options too that I'll get to. But um, but there's just, you know, a lot of stories. <laughs> Some teachers are, you know, like will spend days on one short story. So if that's you, then I would recommend either keeping long stories just for extra if you have, if you need them or assigning them as independent practice. Um, but yeah, you be the judge. So, but the long stories, of course, don't have all of that, like all of the like PQA and TPR stuff because it's already there with the short stories. And yeah, Joan, that's cool that you use the long stories as quizzes. That's perfect. Um, okay, so that's like the core of the unit are the stories, as I just mentioned. One thing I forgot to mention <laughs> is that we do have these um, like country exploration sections. And so, I mean, the best, the coolest thing, in my opinion, about Notre Dame is that we went out of our way to make sure that all of the francophone world is represented and that is why i mean i as like someone kind of looking on at, as this project was being created i learned so much about the francophone world and just all the many corners and places that that includes so in level one um and every level is a little different on how we approach the incorporation of the different countries and cultures but in level one we um every unit focuses a little bit on france um and then in addition to that, there's always two other countries that we focus on. And that means that like stories will take place in those countries, you know, the extra extra material, the cultural material will reference those countries. Um, so I have it in the spreadsheet or in the slideshow, um, what this is like a breakdown of, but just know that this, this first section ex gives students targeted information basically about each country, um, including beautiful photographs, a map, and some simple questions to get them thinking about that place. Um, we have additional activities to like get them out in the community and thinking like, where is the French around me? Like, where, where is the French community? Um, how can I engage, you know, in my community with the language and with the culture? So that's these sections. Um, and then this too, is asking them to like, you know, go to their library and find some books in French and like kind of take ownership of their language learning journey and look for other sources of the language, like with podcasts or books, et cetera. Um, and then some units, not all, unfortunately, but um, some have these wonderful songs. Uh, these, the Amy Silveston, you may have heard her during another workshop or webinar. Um, we've had her perform live before, but she's a woman from France. She is a very talented artist and her and her friends in some cases, I think this is one, um, have recorded songs for us and they're beautiful. And these are based on the unit's theme and the target structures. So they're a wonderful way to like, you know, just start in introducing students to some of those words and concepts right away and just a beautiful song. Um, so I've like had, I've, teachers have told me that they might play it at the beginning of class. And like, you know, what's cool is that after a few days and 
after them reading stories in the unit, they're going to start to understand these the lyrics in these songs better and better. Um, and we do have some activities for it. So that's all available. Um, and then we have in level one only, but um, wonderful series, uh, Super Crayon by Senor Jordan. <laughs> he did it for Spanish first, and then he did this version. But um, all the like narrating and everything is done by a native speaker. And it's just done so well. It's a wonderful series. There's one episode in every unit and there's activities to do with it. And it's like just a fun story of a super pencil and like this boy that finds it and like the adventures that they have. So I highly recommend using that, showing it to your students. Um, it's a wonderful, like it would be a great thing to do on a Friday, um, something a little bit more fun and upbeat. Um, and it gives you a break as well. And then we have the extra extra section and these are in every unit, every level. This is really like, I always define it as like supplemental material. You don't have to dive in here if you don't have time, but it is full of cultural material mostly um, and like in different forms. So we have these articles, but they're done in like an embedded reading form. So there's three versions and each version builds on itself. So it makes it very comprehensible. These are always about like some like, they're nonfiction, you know, so they're telling us about an event or a place in a French speaking country. Um, and there's these question, uh, comprehension questions between them. So again, it's all about like scaffolded material, making it really accessible to everyone. This is something you could do as a class. This is something you could assign. It's really up to you. There's lots of different um, articles. So like, you know, some of them relate to stories that the students have read. So it's almost like a deeper dive on those topics. We also have um, interviews with native speakers. These are like, you know, basically unscripted, just guided based on the unit and structures. So they're, you know, like they're allowing students to basically meet people from around the world, um, talking on topics that the students are now, you know, reading stories about and everything else. Um, and there's always an activity to do with them as well. So these are really wonderful ways to just get students engaged. And we have these video, interactive video activities where they can watch the same video and be asked questions like in line with the video. That's a new feature that Chris built. Um, the photos of the world section, these are basically like scaffolded AP assess or, um, activities. So the students look at a picture um, of the native, like of the French speaking world. They read a short description of that picture and then they listen to a native speaker ask a question about it, and then they record their response. So this is very similar in a sense to the AP inter, inter, interpersonal speaking <laughs> task, um, but with an added element of culture with the picture and reading with the description. So these are really fun and interactive. And then we have panoramas in all of our titles. They're so wonderful. It's like being transported to these different places in the French speaking world. And we get to look around, we can zoom in and see what's going on and we can answer the questions below. Um, and then I actually forgot about, oh yeah, this is the, um, Hannah, can you, I can't, yeah. Okay. I was like, <laughs> Amy, the, the singer made these videos. This was like a few years ago, but I kind of forgot that they were here. Um, but she has just, she's super creative. So as you'll see, like these videos um, are just so well done and she explores different elements relating to the unit um, and she talks, she narrates them. Um, and there's this like a lot of wonderful activities for students to do before the video and then after. So again, really scaffolding that material to make it accessible to students, even at a very low level. Um, and then as far as assessments, um, there are the long stories, like the long story three or four in the lower levels, or just the long story one in the higher levels can be used as a unit assessment. We also offer the like write your original story um, prompt. So it's kind of like you've read all these stories, now you write your own. Um, and they can use the structures from the uh, from the unit. They can, you know, make you can make it as restrictive or as open as you want, really. Um, but this is kind of like based on the concept of a free write and that is used in some CI classrooms. We also have a prompt right after that's like, now tell your story. So they get some speaking practice. 
Um, and then we have the integrated performance assessment. These um, are very authentic scenarios. Like I was saying, they're placing students in like a scenario that they must then like um, basically interpret and, and um, communicate in. So we present the context and then we have always an interpretive and an interpersonal and a presentational section. Um, and these are going to relate to the unit's themes, the unit structures. They're going to also be exposing students to a, like to more than, you know, these are authentic materials. So they're not perfectly comprehensible, but we are giving them some tools for kind of dealing with that. Um, and lots of the questions are sort of like about them pulling the meaning out and figuring it out based on context or cognates, et cetera. Um, and then the interpersonal and presentational um, the idea is that like some of that language that they just got from the interpretive task, in that case, a schedule, they can then use in a conversation um, like with a native speaker and then in a presentational task. In this case, it's writing. So it really folds, you know, like builds on itself and it's all related. And all of these tasks, like similar tasks, rather, interpretive, interpersonal, presentational are woven into the, the story sections. Um, so students have some practice doing these more authentic tasks early on, and these will be like related to the story. Um, so it's it's like an extension of the comprehensible elements um, and pushing the students into like the more um, real life stuff. So um, again, it's up to you whether you want to incorporate those or not. Um, I know some teachers just love them, like authentic materials are like a cornerstone in their classroom and others um, don't as much and you know it just depends on your style and your students um, and last but not least we have the uh, unit evaluations um, these are can be used for placement assessment so I was mentioning that yesterday they're devoid like they don't require students to have read the stories of a unit they're just basically focusing on the vocabulary from that unit so you can get a good sense of where students are um, in terms of like their familiarity with these words by assigning this, like the vocabulary part, for instance, to them. Um, this could also be done at the end of the unit to assess, you know, how well, like where they are with the unit's content. Um, so there's always a vocabulary section. There is a reading section um, focused on the cultures and the um, structures from that unit. And then a writing part, or maybe sometimes speaking and then culture. And I think the culture comes in French. There's like one version that's French and then there's one that is in English. Yeah, so that you can choose depending on you know students comfort. Because in a sense, if you like with the culture, it's like you're assessing their reading skills if you're giving them the French, which is fine. But if you just wanna assess their cultural knowledge and like what they picked up from the unit, doing it in English might be um, a more direct way. Um, okay, so that is, um, the evaluation is somewhat new, and it also, I will say, because Sandra just asked if this is new, um, it's like a few years old that we did it during the pandemic, um, in part for the placement aspect of it, because a lot of teachers were needing to understand where their students went, um, or like best fit into the titles. Anyways, um, but I will say that even if you've used Notre Dame for years, there's probably stuff in it that you didn't realize is in it. Cause it's just like, it's, there's so much and we do add stuff. We try to, you know, email and let you know, but sometimes those emails get lost. Um, there are also readers in every, um, in every type like level in addition to the content. So that's just like more reading, more exposure to the structures um, and you know, without having to buy a class set of novels. <laughs> and with these, there's usually audio, there's gonna be activities. You know, you can really like focus a long time on the on the readers or use them with your heritage speakers um, or more advanced students. Then there's an appendix. This is also a good, like a place to check out um, if you haven't, because a lot of things get kind of hidden in here, but you can kind of see like, some of it is just basic vocabulary reference materials for the students. Um, but then we also have like a TPR gesture glossary. So you can like see all the gestures all in one place. Um, and then we have a cultural section um, that focuses on different events and people from the French speaking world that basically like we know teachers like love to teach that kind of stuff. Um, and we couldn't fit it into the curriculum 
you know, for various reasons, but we wanted to make sure that you had access to some of those resources. So they're like supplemental resources. Um, so yeah, so that's how, um, that's like all the material that you get, which is a ton. And this is, um, and it's really, like I was saying, it's not meant to all be done, but it is meant for you to understand how it's kind of put together and how those short stories are really central um, so that you can, you know, kind of pace from there. Um, and I'm just looking and you're welcome. And yes, yeah, so many great materials. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, culture is really key to the effectiveness and value of Notre Soi. Um, one reason I feel like is that students are inspired by it. I mean, that I think all of us to some degree, but um, I'll speak for myself and just saying that when I was learning Spanish in high school, I like was really wanting to learn about the culture. <laughs> I mean, that was like the draw. And I loved just like finding out about different ways of living and different places. And so putting that so front and center in this curriculum, I think is inspiring for the students. Um, and to just give you an idea of like all the cultures and countries that we touch upon just in level one, um, I just typed this up, or oh, sorry. Um, you know, you can see here that we touch on like so much of the Francophone world in level one, as well as France, you know, and we made sure that France was repeatedly um, explored, especially in level one to like for that base, but then they learn about Luxembourg and Morocco and Rwanda. I mean, it's so rich. Um, I feel like most teachers probably learn a lot from the stories and cultural material in Notre Dame. Um, and it really, Notre Dame supports a robust and growing French department. And I know that like sometimes that is a concern of just like needing to sort of compete with the student or compete with other languages and like get the students engaged and having fun. And I mean, not at the expense of learning the language, of course, but I think that with Notre Dame, because we are vertically aligned, because there's that consistency in the material, because it's story-based with like engaging elements in the culture, it really can like bring those students to the program um and oops sorry i just got a call <laughs> um it's also horizontally aligned as i mentioned earlier so if you have other language departments in your school and they're using voces like the voces our story series like german or italian or spanish they will be doing very similar things like so it's creating like a bigger tighter language community um, the students will be having similar experiences in all the classes and because it is story-based and cultural, it's like going to be a positive one. And it's state and nationally aligned. Um, I will just mention, I just want to like show you really quick. I'm going to log out and show you that in the Voces library section, we have these like subsections right below it that appear. And over here, state alignments, this, this is where you can find all the national and state alignments, um, like ACTFL is the national one. Um, but you can find your state and you can get the alignments for any of our titles. So just keep that in mind. Um, sometimes that's important when you're purchasing the <laughs> subscription at the beginning. Um, and Meredith asked if Notre Dame is designed to be used as a course on its own instead of like French one curriculum. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's a full, and I'm sorry if I wasn't clear up front. Um, it's a full year curriculum. It's meant to be, you know, the resource, like the one curriculum in a classroom. Of course, it is up to you if you want to use it as your core curriculum or as a supplement. People do both. Um, but it's got all of like the materials that you need to teach like year one French and year two, et cetera. Also, as I mentioned before, but just to be clear, like some teachers use it for middle school. The same thing with our, um, you know, other languages. It's like the level one is a level one. So you just might have to go a little bit slower with your middle school students, but it's very applicable to them. And the especially like the super crayon stuff, you know, um, like my 11 year old loves it. <laughs> um, and Teresa asked, how far do others get each year? Do most finish level one with level one? And honestly, and I don't mean to like, I mean, it's like, an, I don't know, people say it all the time, but it's true. The pandemic did change everything. So before people would get a lot farther in level one. Um, and it was more like common to hear people finishing up through like unit five and sometimes even unit six. 
But um, after the pandemic, I will say that everyone I'm talking to is just going much slower. And, um, and yeah, like, it's just like a slow process. And, and that's okay. And I mean, I do think that we've all had to like, kind of accept that maybe our Spanish or French twos, you know, start in unit five of level one and move into level two later in the year. Um, and, and actually that brings up the slide that we're looking at, <laughs> which is, you know, maybe the most important aspect of Notre Soir and one that I really want to like emphasize is that it can be crafted to meet like your unique needs. Um, because it is online, because it is story-based, you know, you can really like weave your own path um, and you can make it your own using the tools like the editor and the assignment tool. Um, you can really like create a curriculum that meets your specific needs or your department's needs. Yeah, <laughs> Catherine, I love the editor too. Once you get over the like overwhelming aspect of the editor, it's like the best tool ever. So as we were just saying, everything can be edited. I mean, I always use the example, like if um, you wanted to change a story and make it like take place in a different location, I don't know, maybe you want to make it take place in your own hometown. You can go in there, edit the story, um, or you could change the name of someone like, you know, anything, you can change anything. You can also add activities and, you know, and change up, uh, delete aspects of the activities, whatever you and your students need. Once you start using the editor, it's like it opens up whole new worlds and we will help and support you along the way. So just remember that because it is, like I was just saying, it's a little overwhelming. Um, similarly, there are built-in assessments that are flexible and accommodate different pacing and schedules. So, you know, don't think you have to do all of the assessments. You choose the ones that you want. Um, the ones that make sense. We do have rubrics, which I didn't really show, but um, so there are rubrics within Voces, but you can also edit them and you can add your own. So if you have like a department version of a rubric, um, you can go into the editor, add it, and it's, it will function just like ours do, um, which is very interactive when you're grading it. Um, and then of course you can, I already said this, but <laughs> you can um, change your activities, you know, you can edit activities, you can add your own. One, another thing that I've heard teachers do is like, if they're reading a story about Morocco and they happen to have been to Morocco at some point in their life, they might create an activity with pictures that they took there or like tell the students, you know, like, how can you not? You'd end up telling them that you've been there and that like what you did, and then you can create an activity that reflects that. So it can just be really personalized. Um, and when you assign, as Mike was saying yesterday, you can really um, craft their experience of it. So you can take those interpersonal speaking activities and make it like auto play the audio and auto record right after and make it so that students can't um, like only have a certain amount of time to complete it. So like that's like making them, you know, like that's like upping the bar a lot or you can lower the bar <laughs> and just assign the interpersonal speaking activity without those restrictions. So you can really accommodate different needs of like goals that you have for your class and different students um, specifically. Um, and then when you give feedback and, and you know, like you might hear this in other sessions too, but I just really want to make sure everyone knows this um, with the, like David talked about the grading yesterday. Um, and as, if you were there, you learned that you can give written feedback on like any activity. You can give verbal feedback, like record your feedback, which is super time efficient and impersonal in a sense. Um, so you can give that, you can use, like there'll be rubrics, which you can kind of see here, like you basically in the grading, when you're grading a rubric graded activity, you just click the criteria that you're seeing reflected in the student's work. And then that will generate um, a percent score. Um, and you can like increase and decrease points and do all sorts of things. So the grading is like, you know, again, like you're orchestrating it, you know, you can like really give targeted feedback or you can just do like group score things where it's like everyone who did it gets a point. So um, Chris has done a fantastic job with, you know, giving you guys the tools you need to do what he keeps hearing that you need to do. So, and of course, let's not forget the games. Um, we have many games in all of our titles. A lot of them are, and I'm just gonna jump in really quick. Um, a lot of them are vocab-based games. So 
and they're going to pull the vocabulary from the unit that the student is in. Um, <laughs> and um, so that it will be like relevant to whatever they're learning, right? So if they're in, in this case, like unit one, and they go to the game center and they decide to play um, Roundup, for instance, which is a vocabulary based game, um, they click here and then, hold on, and then do this. And if they, I'll choose identify five. So now, of course, it's audio, but um, I'll just guess. But, anyways, this is going to be an audio of a word that um, <laughs> was being taught in the unit that I was in. So that's a game that students can jump in and play at any point. Yes, exactly. Christine, that's a good point. It does incorporate all the vocab from the chapter. So it's a great, like, if you're prepping them to do an assessment at the end of a unit, it's good practice for them. Um, we also have some, um, like, story-based uh, uh, games. Sorry. And these all take a little bit of explanation, and I'm running out of time. So, um, but I'm happy to, you know, go over any of this at any point with any of you um, in Zoom or in email. But in this case, it's like you co-create a story with your students. This is such a cool game. And I'm we are a little bit, um, I want to see if I can find, okay. Um, we put this out a, like a year ago or so. And I, you know, we need more stories here. But <laughs> so we'll get those in a minute. But um, right now we have a few French stories. And it's basically like a choose your own adventure type of activity. And I can just show you guys. I mean, um, and so you like present each part of the story and then the students get to choose what happens next. And there's like different branches that happen. And you as a teacher have a lot of control too. And you can do it, you know, as a class with it being projected and it will be, you know, all in French in this case. Um, we have some in English if you just want to have fun and like learn about Barcelona. <laughs> um, but this is just a great game. So keep that in mind. Um, and then we have a few other games. Uh, Story Shuffle is another story-based game. Flashcard and Match are both vocab. And then there's Trivia Night, which, um, which you've been playing during the workshop. So you kind of have an idea about that. And that can be used outside of OSEIS as well. So you can um, generate like the codes, like we had, like music was the last one that we showed you guys. Um, you could generate codes and um, like hide them around your classroom or something like that. <laughs> and and if student when students get it, they log in, so like or go to the link for trivia night, put the code in, answer the question that you have there for them, and you know they can kind of compete against each other that way. So, any questions? I also wanted to mention that um, we are like doing CI Summit again in 2024. Um, th that is a conference that's all about coaching and training in CI and ADI, which are all, you know, the skills that you learn at the CI Summit can be used with the, our story series, the stuff that we were just looking at. Um, so that's happening in Philadelphia in July. And it's, we have a really super early bird discount right now. Are there any questions or anything? Um, I will say that, you know, the Notre Dame is just s such a wonderful collection of stories. The higher level ones, you know, just get more and more interesting because they have more words to work with. So if you haven't yet, I just encourage you to dig around and explore and enjoy the stories yourself. Um, it will give you a better idea of kind of where the curriculum goes and, um, and hopefully you can enjoy using it with your students too. Okay, so I'm going to, you're welcome, Tara. I'm gonna stop recording.